We're going to now take a look at primary amine addition elimination reactions. First of all, let me remind you what a primary, secondary and tertiary amine look like. A primary amine has an NH2, a secondary amine has an N with 1H, and a tertiary has an N with no Hs. We're going to be concentrating on the primary and secondaries because they give the most common reactions. I want to now show you the mechanism for a primary amine understanding that this R group can be many different groups as you see here. I'll show you on the next slide what that looks like in a minute. Alright, so here's our reaction. This will be our primary amine here. And understand that any primary amine, doesn't matter what the R group, will react in this particular fashion. So the first step would be the OH adding to a C double bond O, something we've seen many times before. This will leave a positive charge on the C. The nucleophilic nitrogen can now come in and attack the C+. And now we can go ahead and transfer the proton to the OH. Again, we know that the OH is going to be a leaving group. It's no, there's no oxygen present in the product. So a proton transfer step is the next natural step to perform. Remember the O and this H are going to be fairly close in space as well, as I've discussed earlier. Now that the proton has been transferred to the oxygen, the oxygen has now become a positive charge and this is going to be ripe to leave. And when it leaves, it will leave in concert with the hydrogen leaving from the nitrogen. This forms a double bond between the N and the C to give us our product. All right, the reaction is called addition elimination because we add the amine, this is the addition step, and then we eliminate water and this is the elimination step here. So we've got addition and then we've got elimination. So it's primary amine, addition, elimination. All right, let's talk about some of the other reactions we can have here. Attached to this NH2 we can have a multitude of other groups. We can have an alkyl group which will lead us to an imine. This is an imine as a product. We can use an OH group attached to the NH2 that's called hydroxylamine and you might be wondering why the OH doesn't end up adding as a nucleophile it's because the N is more nucleophilic in this instance and we end up with a, a more stable product than we would get if we used oxygen to attack the C+. The other thing we can do is we can attach another NH2 to the NH2 this gives a compound hydrazine and this leads to a compound called a hydrazone then we can have hydrazine derivatives as well that is with a, like a phenyl group or another alkyl group on the end and that would produce in this case a phenyl hydrazine no, so this is phenyl hydrazine, this would produce a phenyl hydrazone the reason that the NH2 on the end does the reacting and not the NH in the middle is because the NH2 first of all is more exposed than the N in the middle and also the lone pair on this nitrogen helps to boost the nucleophilicity or the delta negative on this lone pair at the end. And besides these, these kinds of products with the C double bond N are going to be more stable 
than, uh, than other products that might result from the attack of this nitrogen here. So it'll always be the nitrogen on the end that will do the attacking. In this instance as well, the lone pair on this particular nitrogen is also interacting with the benzene ring, uh, which leads to less nucleophilicity on this lone pair as well. So it's going to be the end lone pair on the NH2 that ends up doing the uh, that ends up doing the damage. One that ends up actually doing the step where the N can come in and attack the C plus. Related to this, we have a process called reductive amination. What this allows us to do is form the imine that we talked about earlier by way of the NH2 coming in and attacking the C+, eliminating the water and forming the C double bond N compound. The resultant C double bond N compound, called an imine, may be hydrogenated using hydrogen over palladium into an amine and this is a very common way to produce uh, complex amines. We can start off with a ketone and an amine and end up with a more complicated amine by hydrogenating the resultant imine.